It is hard to believe that the high holidays are actually now behind us. What an incredible high holiday season it was. And despite the many challenges, it was so inspiring watching the countless individuals who stepped up throughout these last few weeks to help make the Chagim so meaningful. And as we're now here on the other end of the tunnel, where do we go now from here? What should be our next steps post-holidays? How do we build off of this incredible momentum from these last few incredible weeks? And as we start this next chapter in our lives, what better place to start than in the beginning, quite literally with the first Parsha and the creation of not only the world, but the first man. And the Pasuk teaches us, Vayetzer Hashem Elohim et Adam, that the Lord God formed man, afar min ha'adama, dust from the ground, vayipach be'afav nishmat chayim, and God blew into his nostrils the breath of life, vayhil and nefesh chaya, and man became a living being. Unlike the other animals, the formula for creation we see is not given to us. It's only when it comes to man that we're given his basic elements, this formula. It's earth, adama, and the breath of God. In other words, man is both physical and spiritual. And while the Torah never explicitly and directly tells us that the origin of the name Adam comes from the words adama, it is an obvious connection that really gives us, in a certain sense, a negative and bit of a pessimistic view of man. You see, not only are human beings created with a body and a soul, their life mission is really to empower the spiritual being over the physical. These two forces constantly wrestle with one another throughout an individual's life, each striving for domination over each of us. And yet, just by virtue of his name, it would appear that of the elements that form man, it is Adama, it is the physical, rather than the spiritual that is the main ingredient. Why does the Torah choose to call man by his physical element, Adama, or earth, rather than by the image of God with which he was created? Is man really doomed to a life of subjugation of the spiritual to the forces of the physical? Is that really what life is about? And there's a beautiful Midrash that provides a deep insight into this question. The Midrash teaches that the earth from which Adam was created was actually taken from the future site of the Beit HaMikdash. More so than anything else in the universe, the Beit HaMikdash marks the junction, the intersection that connects heaven and earth. It's the space that we are not only praying at, but it's also the space that we pray towards. It's from there our prayers reach the heavens and through there that God bestows his goodness to all of mankind. In fact, Yaakov Avinu dreams his famous dream while sleeping on that very spot in which he sees the angels ascending and descending a ladder. Man's prayers to God, they ascend the heavens at that location and the divine response descends down that very same ladder. And when Yaakov wakes up, he cries out, Ein zekim beit elukim vizar shar hashamayim, that this is the house of God, and that this is the gate to the heavens. And you see, when this gate opens, heaven meets earth, and man encounters God, and the spiritual just blends with the physical. And with that in mind, we can now see why the Torah crowns man with the title of Adam, appointing him as bearer of the quote-unquote earth of the Beit HaMikdash. By his very essence, mankind represents the fusion between heaven and earth, between the physical and the spiritual. He is the only of God's creatures, including the angels and everything else, that is capable of bringing together these two opposing forces of the universe. Mankind is truly in Adam, a walking Beit HaMikdash, the gateway between the sacred and the mundane. And this fusion is not only one characteristic of a human being. It is rather the definition of our very essence. It is our defining feature. But how do we do it? How do we fuse these two forces? How do we live up to our namesake? And so the Noda Behuda writes that perhaps the true root of the name Adam actually comes from a different word that it comes from the word Adame, in other words, I shall be like, that Adam, that man 
fulfills himself, when he achieves Adama, when he compares himself to, and when he imitates God. It is Hashem who is Chanun, Verachum, Verach Apayim, who is merciful, gracious, and patient. Adama therefore spells the dimension of warmth and relatedness that man must have. The way we bridge the physical and the spiritual, the way that we can be like Adam is to be Adama, which means that we need to mirror God. We need to be like God. We need to build meaningful and new relationships. We need to work hard to enhance the ones that we already have, to be warm and compassionate and kind and generous. Because it's through these divine actions that we allow ourselves to reach our full potential of truly being a gateway to heaven. And with the inspiration of the holidays still fresh in all of our minds, and also serving at the same time as a rock solid foundation, we are ready to live up to our namesake as Adam, as the gateway to fusing both the physical and the spiritual. Our job is to bring the worldly and the mundane into a harmonious coexistence with the spiritual and the sublime. And while it's a tall task to accomplish, it's ours alone to do. As the Kutzker Rebbe famously once taught, that God created only Breshi, that God only created the beginning, but it's up to man to do all the rest. Now is the time for all of us to be doers, to get involved, to make a difference, to continue what we started, to continue to help and inspire our community through all of our actions, just as we've done the last few weeks and months. And so as a walking Beit HaMikdash, as gateways to heaven, each of us has incredible potential and also incredible opportunity to shape this world and the people all around us. Let us all find that strength and truly be in Adam. Let us truly be individuals who add to the spirituality and also to the improvements of this world. And so Orit and Shaya and Nava and Noam, they join me in wishing you and your family a Shabbat Shalom, a peaceful and a restful Shabbat.